like a satellite. Everybody, I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of wide receivers who certainly want to be targeted throughout the game. It's Macklin's Ravens going up against Watkins' Rams. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Yeah, a few short moments ago, running back Tom Gurley trying to fire up the Ram faithful here in Southern California as his guys get sent to do battle with Joe Flacco and the Baltimore Ravens. And we say hi again, one and all. Brandon Gaughton here as we count you down to kick off. And I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, I know even a former defensive back like you can admire some of the receivers in the game today. And Larry showed us a couple that are very likely to stand out in this one. Yeah, and it's hard for me to admit that I actually admire receivers. <laughs> but with their acrobatics, with their speed, with their moxie, and the way they go up and get the football, they can change the outcome of a game in an instant. on first down. They got a man over the middle. It's Woods. And he's brought down after a good game. A gain of 32 that time. And yes, home is where the heart is. And for Robert Woods, it's Los Angeles. He played college football at USC right here in this stadium. Man, probably feels comfortable out there. He was an All-American as a Trojan in 2011. Yeah, really trained to be an NFL player. I mean, he watched a lot of NFL cut-ups and tapes of wide receivers while he was in college before joining them on this stage. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. Throwing on third. Golf. And that is incomplete. 
we talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not forced that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Time to get a look at Joe Flacco as he and the Baltimore offense take the field. Now, Charles, I'm going to give you some negative numbers from this last year on Flacco, and then you give me your assessment of him. He had his fewest yards per game since his rookie year of 2008. And of the 12 quarterbacks who played all 16 games in 2017, his 18 touchdowns were the fewest. But he has hung around for a long time. What do you think of where he's at? Well, I think that obviously the numbers are not what they're looking for. They did get better production to run game, though, this year. Alex Collins, who they picked up for this season, really provided a nice spark. And you know they're a run-first team. And when they get that, that usually makes Joe Flacco a better player. But remember, he's coming off of a knee injury the year before, trying to get back into form. I think that his better years are still ahead of him. I don't think it's all behind him at this point, but he does need to improve his numbers. And it's grabbed by Crockett Gilmore. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts him in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that open things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a hunting down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward to get the first down. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Second down following the run. Operating out of the gun. Flacco over the middle. It's incomplete. The veteran Jeremy Macklin was the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. Here's Flacco. Well, that's complete. It's Watson. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And now the Rams have got it going the other way. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. As possession changes hands here, I get to talk to you about the Super Bowl. It's New England and Philly, a repeat of Super Bowl 39, although that one was in Jacksonville. This one, of course, in Minneapolis. Yeah, I think the only thing that really changes is the weather. But this one's in a dome. So I don't think that that's a real issue for them at all. But guess what? New England has the same coach and the same quarterback. That's a big advantage for the Patriots. Meanwhile, for Philly, everything's new, including a quarterback in Nick Foles that they didn't think would be there right now. And I'm not sure Nick Foles thought he would be there at that point. But remember, he's been to the Pro Bowl before, been to the playoffs as a starter in the NFL. He's got a chance to play a really big game. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big-time play right there. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions, and the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt. Back live now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Rams with a football to get us going, and they've got it here with a first down. On first and goal, Gurley. 
And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Todd Gurley, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Rams are in for six. And as many coaches' meetings as we sit in, we hear the word finish all the time, don't we? And on that play, the back actually finished getting into the end zone, breaking the last tackle. Tried to wrap up, tried to use the proper technique, just wasn't able to get it done. It's up, it's good, and the Rams take a 7-0 lead. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. It certainly was a disappointing end of the season for Baltimore as their offense comes back onto the field. But everyone remembers Cincinnati knocking them out of the playoffs on that Andy Dalton, the Tyler Boyd play. They finished 9-7. and seven. The interesting thing was they had a plus 92 points differential, which was fourth best in the AFC. So that tells me, and we saw it throughout the season, they were back to playing Baltimore Ravens defense. And that really helped their offense out in a big way. I think they still need help at the skill positions. And they've got to upgrade at wide receiver. Alex Collins stepped in and played well at running back, but he needs some help as well. And, of course, Joe Flacco is going to have to continue to get better at his position. They've got to score more points and help out that defense, which played so well in 2017. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Alex Collins, 61 yards. And the Ravens are an extra point away from tying the football game. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. And he puts it through. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is taken at the three. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go up and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. It's gotten to the point where we see guys like that make that type of a catch. Not fair goes through my brain. That size, that speed, and now they're acting like wide receivers, too. Yeah, yeah tight end one-handed catches. They're kind of like wide receiver one-handed catches nowadays. Just not right. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. No chance at all. Way easier said than done. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. Now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense. They got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're... There goes Alex Collins. He's at the 30. 10. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Alex Collins, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Ravens have taken the lead. And with that carry, he's already... Oh, this is blocked. This is going the other way. The Red Sea parts, and there he goes. The 40, 20, 10. 
rib. And he takes it the distance across the goal line for two points. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to something way, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Here's gone. The middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Cooper Cup there. Third down here. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and that just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. They stopped troops. They're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Now Joe Flacco and the offense heading back out onto the field. He hasn't had his best day. They have been good running the football, and they have the lead, though, so maybe he just personally wants to improve his play. And that's without a doubt, because at the end of the game, <laughs> he wants to feel like he had a really good hand in his team winning if, in fact, they do go on and get that done. But the bottom line is finding a way to win the game. So if you're not playing that well, but somebody else is on the team, Keep going to that hot hand. Yeah, not over yet, but looking good here in the second quarter. On second down, Collins. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. Hey, don't forget, by the way, as I go off on a tangent here for a second, that we got the Pro Bowl coming up in Orlando on January 28th, so that'll be that'll be something. I do I do like the fact that they play it the week before the Super Bowl now, as opposed to after it's all over. Because I think that for the guys who didn't make the Super Bowl, it's a big consolation prize, and I think we're getting better play in the Pro Bowl as a result. Those guys come to play, and they're excited about the whole event. Yeah, and it was a little closer last year. It had kind of gotten to the uh, 60 to 45 five out of hand and but yeah I think you're right it was a little bit more competitive it was and I was really happy they went back to AFC versus NFC instead of that draft thing they had for a few seasons and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack Aaron Donald coming hard that time he's able to run him down for a loss of 12 now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football. Led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Second down, Flacco to throw. Now they go screen, it's complete. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. A 
Wood's carry for the vet, Danny Woodhead. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game, and while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take him in short, steady bursts. On is the punter, Cook, who sends it away. So we have reached halftime here with a miss. Why does Larry always do that? He just stops talking. But let's go play the third quarter. I'm psyched. Zerline out now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. On first, they go right back to Collins. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. I don't know about you, partner, but I'm rubbing my eyes after that play. Did we just see? That runner not get yardage? A big time play by the defense. It does happen occasionally, even against the best running backs who are having big days. There's Collins. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. Oftentimes when a guy has a game like this, he's going to take his offensive line out to dinner afterwards. But after a play like that, he may tell him, Instead of getting the stakes, guys, we might have to go for the hot dogs. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Rams will get it at the 20. Now a first down throw. Gone. And nearly picked off there. And it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. But with that one hitting the ground, I wanted to ask you about this kind of in-between week, Super Bowl week next week. What is this week like for the players in between? Number one, healing up for them, right? Getting those bumps and bruises taken care of so they're ready to go on the full Super Bowl week. For the coaches, it depends on their philosophy. Some will start to introduce the game plan the first week. Others will hold it until the second week. Some will go late and kind of do it in between. I do know one Super Bowl coach who used to give this team the entire week off with that two-week gap, and then bring them back and do it just like a regular season game. Got to think, though, if you're a player, you're antsy, right? You're just ready for next week. You really are, and the best coaches, they find a way to slow that down so you don't ramp up too fast. They want to make sure that you explode on game day. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. On second and ten, gone. Incomplete. Cooper Cup was his intended target. And that'll make it third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass. Incomplete. On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. It's a seven-yard run, but it does bring up fourth down. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. 
We just saw the linebacker make that play. They're running with Gurley. Eight yards on the pickup, and it'll be a Los Angeles first down. I like the reasoning. It's too far for a field goal, and it's too short to really get a big field position edge on a punt. Let's go for it. And sure enough, it's the ground game that's able to convert for them on fourth down. And the offense lining up first and ten. Shotgun snap for golf. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Golf now looking to throw. And now spinning away. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. The hitter here, it's complete. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Sammy Watkins there to make the grab. And the Rams are in for six. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. Zerline out now to kick this one away. And the return man, Chris Moore. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. A gain of three, second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, and hit them over the top. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. here on second down over the middle and into the hands of his receiver Macklin and he'll get up to the 43 yard line it goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender yeah well there they ran into a first down executed it to perfection they go play action here on first down now a hit, and Flacco drops the football. It's loose. And fortunately, he's able to reel it back in, but it's going to go down as a big loss here on the play. Well, that was a big oops right there, but how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. A near turnover, but the offense recovers it. Now they'll try to regroup on second. Hey, 
Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone fraction defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Second down, Flacco now. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. They'll try to run for it with Collins. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. But sometimes, Brandon, there's just not a secret to how things get done. He's been running well all game long, and they continue to rely on him in this key situation. They told us they were going to rely on him. They have. He comes through there a big third down conversion. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. What a catch and one-handed, and I'm starting to lose my awe about the play, and maybe I shouldn't. How much of this is the player? How much of it is the glove? Well, those gloves, they do have a little grip to them. They get a little extra tackiness to them now, and I know the guys in the NFL, the competition committee, some other places, they're talking about examining those gloves to see if they're having too much of an effect on the game. First and 10 here for Flacco. Looking left side, that's caught by Macklin. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. A gain of six there on first. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down the wire. They run with Collins, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. Back to throw. Complete to Gilmore, the tight end. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They'll look to throw. His pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Back to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. He'll look to throw. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. That's not exactly what you want there, especially given the time of the clock. But now, you've got to kick the field goal, right? You do, and actually, you show a little faith in your defense when you do that because you kick the field goal here. You're telling them, we believe you'll get the ball back for us for one more shot. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Please tell me this doesn't come off as snarky. But that's a relative chip shot. I mean, you've got to be able to execute that one. I don't care what they design on the other side about trying to block the kick. That should be three points on the board. Yeah, and we've talked about it before. If you're out at 55, 60 yards, low trajectory from here, you get that thing up, this should be three. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing routine in football, but this one really almost should be. Snap, hold, kick, ball through the post. Didn't happen that way. Second down now after the pass completion. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. 
Oh, and now he bowls him over. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back at the 18-yard line. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. The Rams go victory formation as they take the knee. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. One yard officially on the pickup, and it'll leave him with a third and 11. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. Doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. Carry now for Gurley. They'll get six there on the run, but it brings up fourth down. I love the look you just gave me because I, I know what you're thinking. If you're going to run towards the perimeter, you better either stay in bounds or get the first down or both. He didn't either. Imagine the looks he's getting right now from his team, from his coaches. They go over those scenarios all the time. And as you said, he didn't either. Now Campanero. They'll call that a 61-yard punt. He got all of that one. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. He's back to throw. Drops it underneath for Collins. And down he'll go at the 25. Call it a gain of five. And it'll bring up a second down. Well, going into the final play of this game, they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you were wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot.